Right. Right. We, we've almost been neighbors. My father was from Manchester. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Scott yeah. Orland with Cinema Magazine. Uh, the TV series that many of you had the privilege of seeing a few months back is called The Capture, and I'm here with the star of the show, Holiday Granger. Uh, talk about that, because in, in Germany, for example, it's already played. Were you surprised at the public consumption and captivation of this show? Um, I kind of wasn't, actually, because I loved it. <laughs> um, you know, as soon as I read the scripts, I, I read them in the, uh, as I was auditioning, and I just, I was just hooked. I wanted to know what happened, and it was one of those sort of cases of just like, well, I have to get this part because I have to be able to read beyond episode, episode three. Um, and so it was really great to see um, how it really did keep people guessing. And I don't think I've ever been in anything that I've had so many people in the street come up to me to, you know, ask me what's going to happen. <laughs> Everyone wanted to know. Um, uh, and it did, feel, it, you know, it ended up feeling like quite communal. It wasn't a show that people just wanted to talk to you about you. It was people wanted to come up and talk to me about the show, um, which was, uh, which is great. Well, it, it certainly helped that we are living in a time where we mistrust the government and we mistrust big business. So here comes this show that kind of just feeds into our internal conspiracies. Yeah, completely. Um, and I think it did. I mean, it's when I first read it, it felt incredibly timely. And then when we were filming, it started to feel even more timely because there was the whole, you know, the whole idea of fake news blew up. And um and there was quite a few instances of there being, you know, press conferences in America where it was some, you know, an event was filmed from one camera in one direction and one camera in another direction. And even without questioning whether the um, whether the footage was real or not, it was a questioning about, you know, if you see things from different angles, um, morally or like just physically, um, that you can often come out with a completely different um, perception. And I think the capture just pushes that one stage further and makes you question um, the level of manipulation that could be happening. It's fascinating too that television has such a rich history of empowering women in this profession. You know, whether it's something like Prime Suspect or Murder, She Wrote, oh, yeah. whatever. What is it that inherent about women that lend themselves to be good detectives, you think? Um, uh, that's interesting. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, well, I shadowed quite a lot of, I shadowed quite a few women in the, um, in the police service for, for the role of Carrie. And it was, I think the further you get, the further sort of, the further you get in the sort of hierarchy of, of police, the more managerial your position becomes and the more it becomes about, um, being able to, manage people and delegate people and know when to ask for help and know how to uh, sort of navigate um, people skills. And I think um, that was sort of interesting getting to learn. I think that's something that Rachel Carey learns throughout the series. You know, at the beginning, she, you know, by the end of the series, she knows how to ask for help more, I think. So let's talk about the end of the series. I mean, there was a lot of, especially I myself, when I'm watching it going, what? Oh my God, there were a lot of twists and turns. Where can this go? There's much speculation about season two. Can you give us any tidbits? I, I don't think I can. I don't know if I'm allowed. I mean, I just want to, What by the end of season one, I'm, um, and you're, I'm so not sure which way Car Carrie's going to go. And so I can't wait for season two just to, explore that like the different moral possibilities that she could go down and um and also just you know where ben's going to take it in terms of uh surveillance or is it going to be about um you know is it about the police force still is it about the government is it about big business it's like what which which side of surveillance are we going to follow and i think that's what um, i'm going to be really intrigued to see i'm just being a little candid if you could are you just a little suspicious now of cameras everywhere? I mean, you live in, in London, which obviously there are cameras everywhere, but watching the show is like, oh my God, every bit of our life can be manipulated. Yeah, completely. I mean, I think I've, I've always been quite aware of cameras in the home. Like I don't know, I always shut my computer and hide it. I'm one of those person that I always switch the telly off. Um, um, and, you know, just certainly about like anything on my phone. Um, 
but I hadn't necessarily been aware of so much CCTV on the streets before and I'm so much more aware of that now um and I don't know whether sort of like as time goes on particularly with like tech in the home sometimes you just gotta go oh, I just gotta bite the bullet and just be okay with being surveilled whatever I'm doing <laughs> yeah well we can't wait for season two hopefully you're going to start soon uh yes I'm really excited great holiday thank you so much the show's the capture if you haven't seen it turn it on this is Scott Orland until next time thanks Scott bye thanks bye